Hello everyone, my name is Jordan and this is the Garmin Instinct 2. It claims to have a battery that will last forever, but we all know batteries can't go on forever and ever. So how good could the battery really be? What else can this watch do? Will this be nice to use for day-to-day -day use? Who's it for and what can you expect once you get it? Well, let's find out. There's a certain charm to the Garmin Instinct 2 design, if only because it ditches the typical smartwatch look for a more classic digital watch vibe. I think with the case made from a chunky fiber reinforced polymer, or in normal people terms, fancy plastic, and it's also designed to take a beating and survive water to 100 meter depths. By default, they come with a color matched silicone strap. While chunky, the watch is relatively lightweight and very comfortable to wear. Part of that is down to the usual Garmin approach to silicone strap design. As well as being very flexible and bit stretchy, there are strap holes running up the entire length, making it very adjustable. You also get the usual button layout, so three pushers on the left, two on the right, and in this case, they're relatively low profile, while still being textured to make them easy to find and press even if it's wet and cold. Those buttons perform the same functions as you'd find on most other five button Garmin models. The top right starts an activity, the bottom right is a back button on the left from top to bottom. There's a light activation button, then the up and down buttons for scrolling through the screens and the list on the watch's interfaces. It's an easy system to get used to and once you have the basics and there's no fiddly touchscreen here working alongside it either. Just good old fashioned button presses. The Instinct 2 certainly looks rugged and acts it with a 100 meter water resistant rating and an MIL820 military standard shock and dust resistance. But this ruggedness is also part of its identity, the fiber reinforced polymer cladding and big pushers. When it comes to the display, it's about as basic as one could possibly be while still being compatible with a wide ranging crop of Garmin features. So it's a relatively small monochrome reflective MIP panel, which has a tiny circular window display cut into the top right. Being transflective and being a memory and pixel display means it has a couple of key characteristics. It's always on for starters because it doesn't need a backlight or front light to be visible. It reflects the light around it and shows black and white characters in the same way classic digital watches do, but of course, it's slightly more advanced in terms of data and graphical capabilities. Because it doesn't need a backlight, that means it's very battery efficient. That's a big part of why this watch can go as long between charges. The only downside of this reflective screen is that if it's dark, it's not visible without backlight activated. In this case, just like those classic digital watches of old, it's quite a faint blue backlight. It's not really the brightest, but it's enough that you can see what's on the screen when there's very little ambient light. When it comes to fitness tracking, the joy of the Instinct 2 is that it does pretty much everything we've come to expect from a Garmin. It's not really missing anything here. Regardless of your activity, it can track your heart rate accurately, as well as your location, altitude, and temperature. It then collates this data into a detailed view of your activity in Garmin Connect. More than this, it also uses the data to give you a better picture of your overall health and energy levels. I primarily test the Instinct 2 Solar's tracking capabilities when running, and it's highly accomplished tracker in that regard. You can of course just start a run on the watch and track it as you go about your normal routes, and it will track your steps, cadence, pace, heart rate, effort, and distance, all with very solid accuracy. However, Garmin Strength is also in suggesting workouts for you to do, as well as offering up coaching plans in Garmin Connect. It can track any number of activities, including hiking, strength training, and HIIT, among many others. And once you've done your activity, it'll know how hard the session was based on your heart rate and duration of the workout, then suggests a recovery time for you. Plus, if it detects you're having a really chill day and recovering faster, it'll update that time. You can also have this data sync with Strava and MyFitnessPal, so it can be viewed in the context of your food tracking. It's really comprehensive stuff. As far as the more lifestyle-centric elements of a smartwatch experience, Garmin has the basics covered. The watch will mirror your smartphone notifications on both iPhone and Android, and will even offer up a few quick reply options to quickly fire off an answer. You don't get Apple Watch levels of interaction and message creation, of course, but it's enough to get by. You also get weather updates based on your location and calendar access so you can see your next appointments on your wrist. Plus, there's Garmin Pay support for wrist-based contactless payments. Sadly, there's no offline music support for popular streaming services like Spotify, Deezer, or Amazon Music. That's probably the one big thing missing on this model compared to some of the Garmin's other devices. Of course, when Garmin claims this battery can last forever, that comes with a bit of an asterisk as you would expect. Solar recharging needs the right conditions to hit the unlimited mark, but it is possible. If you live somewhere that gets lots of strong sunlight all year round and spend a couple of hours or more per day outdoors, you may find you rarely, if ever, have to charge it. Naturally, I still think it'll be difficult for most people to achieve this. No day is exactly the same, of course, but in a hypothetical world where most days are sunny, the watch could last forever without needing to be plugged in to charge. And if you're ever in doubt about how good the levels of sunlight are at any particular time, there's a solar intensity card that shows you how much sunlight the watch has been able to draw in. Where the Garmin Instinct 2 Solar gets its right is in the battery life department, and that's crucial. 
As I found with other Garmin devices, this only improves further if you go with the larger model. So to answer the question posed in the intro, yes, it succeeds. For those who care about battery life more than anything else, the Instinct 2 Solar is ideal. Even more so if you spend a lot of time outside or live somewhere with good levels of sunshine. With the bonus of the all advanced metric system and fitness tracking capabilities of a modern Garmin tracker, this is a very good option to consider, even if the design, small display, and lack of touchscreen won't be to everybody's liking. But that's just my opinion. Why don't you let me know your opinions in the comments down below. Give the video a like if you learned anything and maybe hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed these types of reviews. If you want another smartwatch option, then why not check out this video on a Maze Fit T-Rex Pro? You might find something more for you there.